All right, Matt, Alex, I'm excited to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress in Las Vegas and learn a little bit about how Nokia and Rockwell Automation are working together. But uh, let's set the stage a little bit. The telecoms industry has been trying to get into the industrial world for some time now with private 4G and 5G, and it's been slow going, and I think it's complicated, right? Cellular is complicated, industrial automation is complicated, so naturally putting them together is complicated. But could you guys maybe reflect a little bit on just some of the obstacles that uh, you have to navigate to make this real? Sure, yeah, the um, you know cost is one. You mentioned complexity, um, lack of devices. Um, on the cost side, it's the installation, and it's per plant, the maintenance, just to keep the network running, that's per plant per year. Um, resources to manage it. Uh, even if you uh, outsource it to a telco, there's um, management you know, that you have to do yourself. Um, and then there's the devices, the actual connection. So yeah, there's a, a decent amount of cost, the complexity, like you, you said it really well, the complexity of not only the infrastructure for 5G, but also for the automation and how to put those together, that's that's a that's definitely a challenge. Yeah, and I mean, Alex, I know Nokia has been working on this since 2018, I think, and I, I know yes. you've, you've learned a lot, you've made a lot of inroads, but just any observations on how that market's developed? Well, I, I think, so the market, I think that you're, you're right, so the market is developing, is developing slow, and I agree with the point that where you have, uh, where, where cost, complexity, um, devices, but I think it's also about actually about the awareness about what is already ready, what is proven out already. And that's where IT, IT OT, there is always this, this, uh, this, this kind of a conflict between IT and OT, where one wants to keep everything safe, and the other one wants to drive technology in order to actually uh, generate more efficiency, generate more output out of a factory. And I think that that's where, on one hand it's slow, on the other hand we, we have been deploying uh, 760 plus customers with private wireless networks, with over 1,000 networks. In manufacturing, 158 networks. So that's not small, and, and that kind of tells you that, yes, technology is there, technology is proven. Does everybody know it, and does ITOT, are they all understanding that, yes, you can actually get these benefits out of it? So I think it's also up to us to, to make sure that we relay that, that, uh, that information, that actually that there is, um, it's, it's a proven technology. It's no longer slideware, it's realware, right? So there are networks out there which are deploying this. Okay, so I think you know that's good table setting understanding of the challenges that have to be addressed, but it's also a huge opportunity, right? It's a huge opportunity for telco to create a new stream of business, huge opportunity for manufacturing to, you know, really do the nuts and bolts work of digital transformation. So with that, tell us a little bit about this joint go-to-market between Nokia and Rockwell. Um, so we're working with Nokia. We're kind of focused on the, the gear that's on the OT side. I mean, we don't do wireless networks, especially with private 5G. So we work with Nokia to be able to do those industrial applications, whether it's spectrum, whether it's you know how to use the network. We're working with them on how to do that and then focus on the automation side of it. And tell us a bit about the network and spectrum piece, Alex. So why I like the, the collaboration a lot is because um, the, the insight into OT the, the ways how the network from a wireline perspective today traditionally how that operates and how that behaves, that is an insight which Wokmal knows very, very well, right? And what we're doing in this collaboration is that we are translating that from a wireline to a wireless, where we are understanding that what is the expectation of the network, of the devices, how does that collaborate, and translating that into its configurations, into settings, so that we can predefine those, but also bring it into new releases, bring it into new software and features that we that we anticipate on what the enterprise is going to need in the future. So, Alex, I think in the U.S. the focus is uh, using CBRS spectrum, so we have shared access to this uh, capacity for enterprises, and uh, you all are using 5G standalone. So. A uh, two-part question here, I guess, can you kind of take us through the benefits of standalone versus non-standalone? And to the CBRS piece of it, is that sharing system reliable enough to really deliver on these mission-critical use cases that manufacturers want to deploy? Okay. Yeah, so when, when it comes to its, the, uh, to its 4G, 5G, uh, and when it comes to standalone, non-standalone, Obviously, the 5G system is a system which is uh, linear cost, is much more, is, is a more optimized system. 
a system which is uh, from a performance perspective different from an LTE network, right? It provides you with a lower latency, provides you with more throughput, um, and that going together with a with a uh, with a lower cost, yeah, that makes it an attractive proposition. That's also why we want to focus on testing that over CBRS. So. So from, from a spectrum perspective, so um, enterprises with CBRS have the ability to, to use the 10 megahertz increments, right? So they can start with 10, with 10 megahertz and see if that actually satisfies their business cases. And in areas where that's available, go up to the full 150 megahertz, right? Um, CBRS with that is an important spectrum, but it's obviously not the only spectrum which we support as Nokia. We're a, a global player, as you know, so we have radios in virtually any band. Um, so also when it comes to global deployments and deployments elsewhere, we can always support our customers to, uh, to, uh, to, to figure out which band they want to use and what's the most optimal. In addition to CBRS or in, like in US or as a replacement in CBRS for CBRS in some other locations. And then, you know, Matt, you referenced the, the cost factor and you also mentioned uh, that, you know, that cost goes up when you're working with an operator. Yep. So I'm curious to get some feedback on um, you know, as you take this uh, joint offering into market, you're going to be competing against operators, right? And they're probably going to be leading their pitch with the fact that it's licensed spectrum. This is your, you know, your licensed spectrum. So how should your customers be thinking about that spectrum piece? Yeah. For, I mean, for our customers, it's, it's really the, you know, there'll be some that want to do it themselves. You know, they'll want to, you know, understand and own kind of the installation and the support and management of the network. Other customers will want to just outsource that. And we'll be able to work with either, you know, and, and uh, like Alex mentioned, the products from the device side, we'll be able to support a number of different options from a spectrum standpoint. So we'll be able to work with the customers in either application there. And then I think this, this always comes up, it's a bit of a, a, a false question, I think, but we'll address it anyway. Wi-Fi, you know, I think yeah. there's people often set this up. Is it Wi-Fi or is it cellular? And I mean, yeah, and I, I love that question, and it's been it's been a question which has been around since the beginning of private wireless, and the answer is not either one, right? So there is not uh, Wi-Fi and 5G are not mutually exclusive. The question which we get asked is, okay, well, you bring on the 5G network is going to replace our Wi-Fi, and the answer it is it augments the the Wi-Fi, and there is very good use cases for Wi-Fi when you have local traffic, when you don't need mobility, you don't need transitions over multiple access points and maintaining the performance. And also for applications which are not very sensitive to its stability and latency and stability and performance. Um, for those use cases, that's where, uh, where OT really relies on 5G connectivity rather than Wi-Fi. And, and that's where you see um, them actually pivoting then those applications from Wi-Fi applications over to its, uh, to its 5G. Applications like AGVs, right, so very typical. Uh, you don't want an AGV, you don't want uh, an autonomous robot actually stopping in the middle of your production line, creating a then traffic jam and creating all kinds of security hazards. Yeah, so AGVs, that's one that I hear a lot about. Um, computer vision seems to come up a lot, but just what are some of the in-demand use cases that you all are seeing today that are you know, really delivering kind of short-term ROI and business yeah. value? Yeah, so the, uh, there are several of them. Edge to cloud is one, which is more of a data, you know, to feed the data analytics, you know, starts beginning uh, applications of AI, but just a, you know, some edge processing connected wirelessly to push data, you know, and, and the, the private 5G nature makes that uh, location of that edge processing really flexible. Um, another one is just connected worker. Um, that's probably one of the best with the, the, the devices that are actually available, whether it's a tablet or phone or whatever. Um, mobile assets like the AGV AMR, that's probably the best use case because the requirements that they have, like you just mentioned. Then the last one is the one, one of the ones we're focused on is the kind of the control aspect or untethering an asset so, uh, or a work cell or a machine so customers can move those around to where they want them to be just to optimize production. So uh, what should we be thinking about kind of next steps for this relationship between Nokia and Rockwell? I mean, there's a lot of manufacturing interests out there that I, I know could benefit from, from your help. So what, what's next? So I think so, as, as we said, we, we really benefit mutually from the, the knowledge and experience which each other have in, in, in our own industries, right? So uh, operations, technology, 
um, the actual factory operations. That's something which uh, Rockwell knows very well how it operates, knows very well how the, how the devices uh, collaborate with the wireline network and what that means for wireless. So I think one is the fact that we actually will pre-configure a lot of those networks, that we actually will know exactly how actually configuration are to be set up. So the customers don't need to, uh, don't need to, to play around with, don't need to pilot that, that's already a given. And I think the second one, which is, uh, which is huge, is development of features, right? So through the collaboration, we identified that what actually features do we need to develop on the network for manufacturing, so the pre-build, you don't want a network that actually does everything for everybody, but you want to build a network which uh, is, is scalable and which can be deployed in a way that actually it fits that particular target user group. And, and we're working with Nokia on being able to test, you know, and not only at our product test labs, but also at a customer site to be able to like, okay, here's it, here's the actual performance and how a control system works on a private 5G network, now how can the customer apply that? And we test very demanding use cases, right? So for instance, when we think about things as low latency, yeah. how do you go to extreme low latency? What serves the use cases now, but also some of the future ones? And there's much more testing uh, going to be. Yeah. All right, well it sounds like a, a really pragmatic approach to helping manufacturers drive their digital transformation strategies forward, and I appreciate you all taking the time to share your perspective with our audience. Thank you very Excellent, much. thank you. Thank you, Sean.